So as we get started with these each year, um, I kind of keep this cheat sheet updated uh, from the right hand side. We've always got the latest and greatest release, which is Inventor 2013, what we're looking at today. Over on the left hand side, start with the three most releases, uh, three most recent releases back. So we've got 2020, 2021, and 2022 there, kind of showing some highlights that we've covered in the past webinars for each of the uh, releases on the What's New presentations. But today we're here to talk about 2023, and we've got some bomb enhancements, uh, some display extended information updates on the sheet metal side, uh, faster imports, translator updates, uh, inventor to Fusion 360 updates, there's a new home, uh, area, there's a new mark command. We can copy and move revision tables across drawings and sheets now, uh, easier, and everything still stays updated. Uh, some improved free orbiting uh, on the modeling side. So a lot of different enhancements here, but Inventor 2023 was really about the users. And throughout the, the beta testing side of last year, building up to this release, it was what can we put in from the user side, different updates, different requests, different enhancements. And so 2023 Inventor was really built around the user. And that's updating commands, adding a new feature like the mark command uh, for etching, uh, for uh, plasma burning, and you know some 3D annotation updates, new constraint enhancement updates. So those types of updates and added from the features, and I'll kind of point out some of those as we get through them. So, where do we get Inventor 2023? Well, there's two ways to get it. Uh, you can do it from the in Autodesk desktop app, which is installed locally on the user's machines with any of the Autodesk software, uh, just inside the desktop app, under the My Products and Tools, locate the software you're looking for, agree to the terms and conditions, select install, it will start the install in the background for you. Or we can go out to the Autodesk accounts page, accounts.autodesk.com, log into your Autodesk account, uh, and my screenshot here, I filtered for 2023 product, um, select Inventor, select View Downloads, Inventor 2023, the language you're looking for, in my case was English, and then Install Now. It starts the install process. Uh, with Inventor 2022, they really revamped the, uh, the way the software installs faster, uh, not needing as much in the background as far as the build goes. So the installer was, was uh, smaller and the time it took to install was smaller. So this is the Inventor 2022 uh, desktop installation for uh, how it looks. And so we've launched the installer where we're gonna put the product, where we're gonna put the content libraries, and then we select the libraries, River Interoperability, the Inventor Electrical Catalog Browser if we wanted it, DWG TrueView as well, install, it runs right through. Back with Inventor 2022, uh, when I was installing it on my laptop, it took eight to nine minutes very fast getting it all installed that was in all the content libraries as well and then comes along inventor 2023 so the splash screens change a little bit with the new release uh agree to the use select next where we're going to install it we're going to put it in the program files we're going to put the content uh, center files where are they we're going to we're going to install a d drive e drive c drive we still get to pick those the additional components we're putting in there, the content libraries, DWG TrueView, the Inventor Electrical Catalog Browser install. And once it's done, we select start to launch the product or just close the dialog and launch it later. So broken this out into four areas that we're gonna look at today of the enhancements. Uh, we've got general enhancements, uh, drawing enhancements, interoperability and performance, as well as modeling enhancements that include parts and assemblies. So when we get started here on the general side, when you first launched Inventor 2023, and this was an Inventor idea submission as well, and this is the new home screen. And when you first launch it, nothing there yet, we we'll start opening some files uh, or activating an older project file that had Inventor files uh, loaded as well. But on the left-hand side, we've got the, uh, the product. Our project files are listed right here. We can open an existing file, start a new file, go to the what's new, we've got some shortcuts here. Uh, once we have files loaded, there is a detailed view versus a gallery view. So we can select the detailed view and kind of see some details, the date modified, the files and sort them. Uh, and then if we're looking at the gallery view, the most recently looked at files we're working with there. Now, depending on how your uh, settings are in the application options, we'll de determine how many files are here. The default setting is 50 for uh, the for Inventor remembering how many files were last opened. Uh, you can only go up to 199, but Got to have one or 50 if it's turned on to show those. 
Uh, but in my case, I only have the 10 files showing here. That's all I've opened. But the reason they went with this and they changed it, you know, they just gave us the Inventor Home back in Inventor 2016. And then they changed it again in 2019. And then they kind of updated it once or twice. Well, they wanted to give a common experience across the product. So if we take a look at AutoCAD 2023, uh, we've got AutoCAD, open, new, recent files. We've got the details. We've got the gallery. Same thing here. If we take a look at AutoCAD Electrical, same thing. We've got the new, open, recent files that have been worked with. So they're trying to make it common across the board. And so that's why they changed it this year on the Inventor 2023 side, kind of give it that more common experience. And that was one of the things users wanted, that we want it to look the same when we're moving from one product to the other. So Autodesk come back and said, there we go. So this was new for Inventor 2022. Um, and I don't think a lot of users saw it because we still get support cases on it. We still get requests about this all the time. But Inventor 2022 had this uh, command added called Reset UI Layout. And this was added in, and it's not resetting the application options, not resetting your keyboard commands. It's resetting the graphical layout. So if you're working with multiple monitors and you have to go home, traveling, going to the hotel, whatever it is, and you had Inventor on the second screen, or you had Inventor on your third monitor, and your dialog boxes are still over there. Well, it can be a pain in the butt to get them back to the right monitor. So this button was added inside Inventor 2022 um, called Reset UI Layout. It's on the Get Started tab, as well as on the View tab, Reset UI Layout. And it just brings the model browsers, the ribbon menu if you've moved it, uh, any custom menus you've made, any dialog boxes that have been moved to another monitor, it moves them back to the window that Inventor is on at the time you run the command. So it's just bringing everything back to that one window. So I left that in there this year to uh, kind of hit it again and make sure everyone understands that that command is still there. And if we are working with multiple monitors and we do need to reset them, we can use the reset UI layout without updating our document settings or application options and uh, from there. So tolerances, we can now apply tolerances on any of the fillets. So all three fillets, uh, fillet types, support tolerances. So when you're in the edit fillet dialog box or dialog wizard there, uh, expand the uh, dimension arrow, select tolerance, and go right in and edit your tolerance. So as you're applying the fillet or when you go back and edit the fillet, we can do that for all of the fillet types. Displaying extended information has been around for a while. Um, they've kind of added it since 2013, been adding more and more information uh, to different releases. Well, this year it's been updated to include sheet metal features of face, contour flange, and the flange. So looking at the left-hand side here, without the extended uh, information toggled on, I've just got a face, I've just got a contour flange, and I've got a flange right here. Well, we turn that on and you can do that in the model browser, hitting the little three horizontal bars, display preferences, show extended names, or inside the application options on the part tab, display extended information after feature node name and browser. And then it tells us a little bit more. So in this case here, the face is a new solid and it's driven by the thickness of the material in the rule. The contour flange is a new solid. It's also represented by the thickness in our rule but it's 25 millimeters one direction, 25 millimeters in the other direction. So it's using an asymmetrical option there. And this face is joining the other face. It's also utilizing the thickness. So it's giving me a little more information. The flange is 20 millimeters by 90 degrees. But also notice that the cut, the mirror, the work plane, they also have that extended information turned on. So those have been supported in previous releases. You just gotta turn it on if you wanna see that inside the browser without having to go back to edit those features to find out where those, where those dimensions are, where that information is stored. You don't have to go to the parameters to look at it or back to edit each feature. Improving the free orbit experience in the navigation side. So the shift and the mouse wheel. If you're working with a three button mouse, the shift and the middle the mouse wheel or the middle button there, press and hold it, we have some new behavior options. So if the full model is in view, the pivot point is the middle of the geometry center. If the model is partially in view of how you're currently looking at your model, the pivot point snaps to the nearest edge face or vertex of the nearest component from where your cursor is. If the model is outside of the view, the pivot point is the center of the location of your cursor. 
And so just the shift key and the middle mouse button or the mouse wheel press and hold and move around and it will start orbiting differently there in Inventor 2013 than it has in different in uh, previous releases. So Inventor 2023 also introduces a new display option uh, that takes advantage of these high-end graphics cards that uh, we're getting on laptops and on uh, high-end towers. And it's supporting that hardware ray tracing. So this feature is called GPU ray tracing. It is in a pre-release state, which is fully supported, but it's in pre-release because they're going to keep adding to it in a few updates and releases to come. Um, but in earlier releases of Inventor, when you selected a ray tracing to start rendering an object, uh, the viewport would use what is called the Autodesk Ray Tracer, or ART. Uh, that provided interactive results using only the computer power. But well, now, inside the application options, we get to tell it whether we're going to use the computer power or the graphics card power. So we can tell it CPU or GPU. Uh, GPU has the potential for higher performance and quality when it's making those renderings for us to uh, make those high quality images to put on the website and send to customers. Um, Inventor Studio still uses the existing CPU as the new GPU ray tracing has not been added to that environment yet. It will be one of the future updates though. It's just not there yet. Some translation enhancements. So each year when the software comes out in the spring, in this case, Inventor came out in late March, um, we update, we are updated and allowed to pull in what some of the competitor sites or uh, softwares are in their current release. So Inventor uh, supports up to version 2022 of Solid Edge and uh, 2022 of SolidWorks on the imports. Um, the JT uh, importing 10.6 and 10.7 read and write capabilities. Uh, the AnyCAD reference model, uh, formats for uh, translating for placing those live references have been updated as well. Uh, Solid Edge for 2022 and SolidWorks up to 2022 as well. So now let's toggle over and take a look at some interoperability and performance updates and enhancements here. So a lot of work has been done in the past few releases uh, for Revit users looking to share their data with us on the inventor side for custom fabrication. We can open Revit data inside of Inventor. And we can kind of choose what we're looking for if we know what we're toggling through there. And everything is still there, but we don't have to do it that way anymore. Now there is a way for Revit users to select the data they want to send via data exchange, and it creates a link to that file via the Autodesk accounts or the Autodesk docs. And they can send us that link, and then we can pull that link into Inventor. We access that data. It's an associative link. So if they make changes on their end to the Revit side, they hit save, it updates that link, which automatically updates inside of Inventor. They don't have to email us a new file. We don't have to export it or take this one out, and replace it. It's just a live link back to that file. So kind of like we work with AnyCAD now, placing live links uh, to the data from step files or SolidWorks files or Solid Edge files into Inventor. This is just a cloud-based way of linking that from the Revit side to Inventor. If we've ever considered working with Fusion 360 and Inventor at the same time, now we have a little easier path there. So once we've got Fusion installed and working on the desktop, uh, we also have the Fusion tab available there inside of Inventor. And that gives us the ability to create tool paths, advanced simulations, electronic designs, generative design studies with one-click workflows. So inside of Inventor, uh, We've got our model open on the Fusion 360 tab. We can create our generative design studies. We can start some simulations. We can do additive subtractive manufacturing, or we can do our modeling design, send it up to Fusion 360, work on it, and come back. Also, we have an experience. Uh, we can experience improved design fidelity or image fidelity uh, as we're working between Inventor and Fusion 360 as long as on the import side, we include meshes. So in the import dialog box, uh, under the convert side, if we select include meshes, then we're gonna get all of the components, all of the little uh, nodes inside. And so when we bring it from Fusion to Inventor, as long as we're selecting meshes, we're gonna get everything there uh, included in the model. The modeling enhancements, as we slide right on through, uh, we've got this new mark feature. And this is a new command. And this works 
for sheet metal files. It works for standard files. And this allows us to create content representing laser marking, etching, engraving. Uh, these mark features are displayed in the 2D and 3D. They can also be exported within the flat pattern uh, for a DXF or DWG face. Uh, we have mark styles that we can control the modeling and export behavior of those styles. Each mark style or command style that we create is mapped to an exported layer in that DXF or DWG file as well. So it's not the embossed command. We're not taking away geometry. We're not adding geometry. We're just putting the laser lines on the file here for etching purposes uh, for laser or engraving. How many times have we received a model from someone or started working on a, a model from a few years back? And at one time it had projected references to a component that's no longer there if it was created in an assembly or to a feature that was no longer there if it's created in a part. And the little sketch doctors lit up. We try to make a change and it says, hey, we've got an issue with this sketch over here. And we've got to go in, we've got to go find those broken references, we've got to delete them, figure out where they came from, repair the relationship, remove the relationship, delete it, whatever it is. Well, now, when we know that there is an issue there, we can right-click the sketch browser node, or we can right-click in the graphical area there while we're editing that sketch. And in the right-click menu, you will see something called Select Broken Projections. You select that, it highlights all of those broken projections for us in that sketch, and you can hit delete on the keyboard and they are gone. So without having to go hunt and find them, all right, I know they're in sketch three, edit sketch three, right click, select, select broken projections, delete, and they are gone. And now we can reproject what we need or we can keep moving if we didn't need them anymore. Another sheet metal enhancement is the contour flange now has an asymmetric option. So when we are working with a contour flange uh, here, we still don't have push-pull functionality built into the sheet metal side, but we do have the asymmetric option now. And so we can have distance A at two and distance or distance B at a half an inch. So we're going one way of the plane, one dimension, another direction, the other dimension. So we now have that option added. Been needed for a while, one of those uh, idea submissions as well, and it was added this year. Another inventor idea submission is being able to toggle solids, work features, and sketches easily. And so we can do that now, visibility-wise, using the Alt key on the keyboard and V. So it's worked for components for the past few releases. Well, now when we're editing components, it works for sketches we have selected, work features we have selected, as well as solid bodies we have selected. Select them, Alt-V turns off visibility. You select them in the browser, Alt-V will bring back all the visibility. A few more enhancements we hear, uh, and enhancements we have here. Um, when a substitute model state is active, place I logic component, analyze interference, activate contact solver, convert to weldment, um, a few other parameters, a few other commands are now disabled. So instead of being able to pick them and nothing happens, they're now disabled. So if we've got a substitute model state active, um, so right here we're looking at the master and we've got one of these substitutes active, we start seeing some grayed out commands that we cannot work with, which is great. Now we don't have to pick anything that we can't use. Uh, inside the constraint dialog box, and this is one that, this was a user request for a few years now, but now as you're editing a constraint, we can actually suppress it right here inside the dialog box without having to edit it, put it where it's at, and then right click on it, suppress it from the browser. While we're editing here inside the dialog box, just click suppress, select okay, the constraint is applied and then suppressed. Uh, we can rename storyboards just by right-clicking on the title and selecting rename. Uh, that was added in there. Previously, we added, we named the storyboard as we started creating it. Now we can just rename them as we would like to. Um, there's also a new frame rate option added in when publishing to videos. Uh, the default setting is 15 frames per second. Uh, the maximum value is 200, but you can control that as you're exporting to the video. Um, there's also the follow pattern checkbox there inside the bolted connection tool has been updated to include sketched patterns. So if we have a sketch driven pattern, 
it will now follow that as well as it has been following rectangular patterns or circular patterns in the past. Cuban pipe auto presets, they're now remembering. So when we are editing the route command, uh, we're replacing routes and we go back in and place another route or we're going to edit a route, it automatically brings up the last used ones when we're using those. So whether it's the auto route setting, the convert auto route to, the, uh, auto route to sketch, if it's the auto dimensions or if it's the auto constraint, it automatically remembers the last few settings, just like many of the other feature line boxes work with and uh, brings those up and has them selected so we can keep moving faster. We can still turn them off if we don't need them. Just trying to make it cause less work for us. And then we've got some drawing enhancements we can look at. And first one here we'll take a look at is the ability to edit detail views, <coughs> excuse me, and change the shape of the fence, whether it's circular, whether it's rectangular, whether it's smooth, whether it's jagged, as well as display the full boundary, put a connection line on it. We can go in there at any time and edit that and add, change the shape, adjust the view, it still updates. Just pull the connection line to it so it's pointing directly to it. That's one of those ideas that was finally put in that's probably been out there for seven or eight years or more. So some model states updates, we have a new model configuration category that is added to the uh, format text dialog box. It's in the uh, combo pull down. So under type, if we select uh, the pull down here, we'll see model configuration. This allows us to add model state labels to our text, to our view labels, to our view headings, to any text we wanna put on a drawing. And when we are creating an overlay for parts, we can now use the model state as the phantom overlay. Um, so inside the overlay box under the model state, select our primary, select one of our uh, new states we put in there and use it for the overlay as well. Revision table, we can drag and drop or we can copy paste the same revision history on each sheet without having to make a generic table and, and type it in or copy and paste insert it as an image, whatever it is, we can now drag and drop that same revision table. We can copy and paste it to a different sheet so that we've got the same information on each sheet as we're going there. Uh, the view name or view property label, as in 2022 and older, where it just says label A, has now been renamed to view identifier. And then the category or the uh, area right here is called label. So underneath the label, we now have view identifier, which is calling out our label B, label A, C, D, E, whatever it is, section views, front view, side views. It's now called view identifier. Another thing we can look at here from texting side on drawings is in 2022 and older, when we were editing a drawing dimension, we could only look at the model or user parameters. Well, with Inventor 2023, we can now look at standardized properties, physical properties of the model, sheet properties, as well as drawing properties. So let's jump over to the software now and take a look at a few things. So here is the Inventor 2023, uh, the new home screen. When we first open it up, um, it may be blank. So we add a project file in here and load some files. Uh, the active project files, uh, can be toggled right through here, the ones that you've had loaded in previous releases, or we can hit the little expand in settings, and that will take us to our traditional projects dialog box. If there's one, one of these files you don't want to see, you can right click, remove from list, and it goes away. You can pin some of these if they're more you're going to work on more assemblies ahead of time. Want to make sure they're always there. You can still pin those. Functionality is still there. We've got the open, we can go directly to the open dialog box. We can go right to the new from templates or a little pull down and then select the template we're working with here. Uh, what's new takes us to the what's new uh, website page, the help menus, online tutorials, the communities, the inventor app store. All this is still available. We just now have a common view uh, or interface across the uh, different Autodesk products as far as the welcome screen when we launch the software. 
So get a, uh, a file open here. And one thing we'll, we'll look at real quick is the GPU versus CPU on the ray tracing side. So as long as you have realistic uh, visual style selected, uh, the ray tracing toggle is enabled uh, where we can select it here. So if I go to my application option on the hardware tab, uh, I can enable GPU ray tracing. As long as your graphics card supports it, this option is available. If your graphics card does not support this, you will see a message right here that says your graphics card does not support this function. Can't do it. But in this case, I can. So I'm going to turn this on. And we'll come back over here to the View tab. And we will enable ray tracing. And then depending on what, si what setting we've got it for, if I've got it set on high, draft, or low, whether it's going to go faster, whether it's going to go smoother. Um, but the more it runs, the cleaner the view gets. So you can run it a couple of times and just keep hitting continue, and it'll keep cleaning it up. And you'll start getting deeper uh, resolutions, deeper images, deeper reflections, uh, the contours, the edging. All of that will keep getting faster or uh, higher, more brighter on the resolution. Uh, we can change this at any time in any of these settings. And you can render this out until you like the way it works. You like the way it looks, take the screenshot for the website or for the client, whatever it is. You can keep working with this. It just using the graphics processor now versus using the computer to do it. So in most cases, the graphics card is stronger than the CPU uh, display uh, renderer anyway. And so now we're just taking advantage of that with Inventor 2023. So we can keep going in and out, you know, 20 seconds in, got a really high def. Uh, view of this model here, and I can keep continuing and going on until we're satisfied with what it looks like. So we will disable that so it gets out of the way there. Let's come back over here to the home, open up a, a sheet metal file here, and we're going to look at the flat pattern. Uh, we have nothing on this guy at this time, and so we'll just start a new file or a, a new sketch right here, and we'll throw some text on this one. And we will go with Hagerman. And we'll finish that sketch. And then right here on the modify panel, I have a mark command. And this is where I want to mark that text onto that surface. And we don't see it. And the reason we don't see it is because my view is set to show model only. So I'm going to show with edges. And there we will see the edges come in there. So these are just individual edges coming around. There's no depth, there's no emboss. It's just marking it here on this for me. If I go look at the flat pattern now, I will see that Hagerman is right there. Uh, same rules still apply. If I put a sketch in the flat pattern, it's only going to be applied to the flat pattern. So if I do the same thing on this side, if I put a Hagerman on this side in the flat pattern, finish sketch. I can mark it here as well, hit OK, and there it is. But if I go back to the folded part, it is not there because it was only added to the flat pattern. So the same rules still apply. Anything you added to folded exists in the flat. Anything you added to flat does not exist in the folded. So that is still there for that as well. All right. So um, we'll start a new drawing view here. And we will just grab a base view. And we'll use that part there that we just created. And I'm going to create a new model state of this file here so that we've got one, two in here. So when we are looking at these files, I've got my different model states. So if I have different, what we're used to seeing levels of detail, now we have model states. If we have different model states, we can toggle those between the views here. And then if we are applying overlays to those, we can do the same thing. We can apply different states for our overlay views there as well. So the detail view, if we come into this one right here, and so I've got my different shapes, rectangular, circular, don't want to jagged, don't want to smooth. And so we'll just put it on this corner right here. And there it is. So now if I right click edit detail properties. Now I can change this to the rectangular. I can change this to smooth and it changes up. 
and I can right click and I can say, you know what, give me that, the full display boundary and show me the line so that it gives me that line right there showing it as well. So different options there. We can change those on the fly now as we're working with them. Uh, the view still updates no matter where we put it. As long as it's still inside the same viewport, we can move it around and everything still updates there as well. All right, let's toggle over here and see if we have any questions that have come in. All right, got a couple of questions here. Um, any changes to the project selection? Um, have a customer that uses the a production project instead of the default, uh, and they had some problems going from 2021 to 2022. I have not had any, I have not seen any support cases come in or heard of any users uh, complaining about any issues uh, switching between projects uh, with 2023. Um, so I don't know of any. Uh, the new pivot point functionality worked with a 3D mouse. Um, the, the, the new pivot point on the rotating side is only when you're holding shift and the middle mouse button on your uh, standard mouse. So the 3D mouse still zooms in, still zooms out on 2D, and it also will still uh, rotate around center of your model based off where your selection is um, inside a 3D view. So it's going to have no effect there. So question was, does the new mark feature show up on the drawing? Asked and then answered. Next question, counselor. Uh, so Brian asked, if we're using 2021, should I first install 2022, then install 2023? No, sir, you can go straight to 2023. Uh, the Vault uh, product, if you're using uh, Vault, uh, Vault can only go in two-step jump itself. But Inventor, you can go to whatever version you want to go to as long as it's going forward. So Inventor 2021, you could go to 2022 or 2023 by skipping 2022 and no issues there. All right. Any other questions coming in here? Uh, the mark feature is uh, consumed there inside the sketch. Can that can they be exported by themselves? Just the features? Are we asking? Uh, yes, Brian. Uh, yeah, you can go from Vault 2021 up to Vault uh, 2023 uh, without without going through 2022. Yes, you can you can skip that one year. Uh, you could export the face there, Pete, uh, not the sketch itself. So you have a good question. Uh, I have not tried it at the assembly level. Let's see here. If we put a new sketch on a face right here, and we throw text on a face right here, And we call it Hagerman. We finish that sketch. We do not have a mark command here to edit here. So we could do it editing this part at the assembly level, doing it as a, a ghost edit here inside, but not directly to it.
So Eric, great question. When orbiting the model uh, completely out of the view, uh, it will orbit around the mouse position. Where does the depth of the position come from? It comes from based off of how far out you are zoomed from your zero, zero, zero point. So wherever your UCS is set up and wherever zero, zero, zero is, that's gonna be the depth that it's coming from as to how far out you are zoomed in, zoomed out. So if you're zoomed way out here, you know, depending on what that depth is, uh, you know, it's constantly keeping up from a, uh, a uh, parallel or I guess a perpendicular view uh, measurement from the screen to where the model is, so that when you would start that rotation, it would go all the way around where that is and then come back in. So it's going to go based off when you do that, there it comes way back in slow. Uh, so when I zoom way out there like that and I do that shift and the middle mouse wheel, uh, it's gonna row way out there as it's going around uh, because it was off there. It may not have updated there, but yeah, the mark the mark is not there. 